Okay, in this example, we are going to take a function and an application, find its inverse, and then talk about a little bit of characteristic. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and look at the problem. It says the velocity v in centimeters per second of blood in an artery at a distance x centimeters from the center of the artery can be modeled by the function v equals f of x 500 times 0 0.04 minus x squared. For the interval 0 to 0.2, find a formula for the inverse function. So this first part, when we need to find the inverse function, essentially what we need to do is um, switch x and y, then solve for y. And that's essentially the concept behind um, inverses, right? Like the x and y's like flip, right? And then so when we need to find the function, we do exactly that and then just solve for that y. So if I go ahead and take um, v, which is f of x, and write 500 times the 0 0.04 minus x squared, I could go ahead and rewrite this part as y. And let that be equal to 500 times 0 0.04 minus x squared. Now what I would do is exactly this next part is switch the x's and y's. So everywhere I see a y, I'll put an x, right? And everywhere I see an x, I'll put a y. So let's go ahead and do that. So now I'm going to have x equals 500 times 0 0.04 minus y squared. So notice I didn't touch anything, not even the square on the y. All I did was look aesthetically at y and x and switch them. So now what I can do is this last part, right, is solve for y. So I know my y is here, and now I have to rewrite it so it's isolated on one side. So next, um, I'll go ahead and solve for y. And I'll have x equals now 500 times 0 0.04 minus y squared. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is do what I always do, always we should, is go ahead and divide each side by that coefficient, right? We're going to go ahead and divide um, each side by that 500. So then we'll go ahead and get x divided by 500 equal to 0 0.04 minus y squared. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and now I can isolate the variable term. And again, keep your eye on the prize. We're always trying to solve for y here. So I'm going to go ahead and move that 0 0.04 over. So I'm going to have x over 500 minus 0 0.04 equal to negative y squared. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of get rid of that negative by just changing everyone's sign to be positive, positive, and then negative. And essentially, we're just multiplying through by a negative. That way, and then I'm going to do something fun here. I'm going to change this to a fraction. That way, I don't, I don't, I guess I would say I'm not comfortable having a decimal and a fraction together. So I either pick fraction or decimal. Now I can foresee that I'm going to have a square root here. So I do like fractions when it comes to square roots in case there's a perfect square that I can reduce or something like that. So let me rewrite it. It's positive. I'm going to let it be leading. So I'll rewrite it as 4 over 100, which is the equivalent uh, fraction form of the decimal 0 0.04. Then have minus x over 500 in the back equal to y squared. Now I can make this look a little nicer because um, 100 is a very good denominator when it comes to 500. So I can rewrite this as a um, common, you know, one fraction with the same denominator. So the common denominator would be that 500. So we'll multiply top and bottom by 5. And therefore, we can see that we'll get 20 minus x all over 500. And that's equal to y squared.
All right, and the last piece would be taking the square root. And notice that our domain here is um, 0 to 0.2, which would imply that our y, I mean our inverse y, so this would mean for the inverse, the range is in this interval 0 to 0.2, right? Because x and y switch with that inverse. So that would mean that um, in this case that we would go ahead and notice that when we take square root here, I'm going to move this up a little, I'm going to have the positive square root of 20 minus x over 500 equal to y. I will not include the plus and minus because the negative for the range, I know y will never be negative because of this relationship here of the inverse function. So I know it will remain positive. So there, there it is. There, um, and we always rewrite in the end y to be what it originally was, whatever that function was. And that would either be f inverse of x or v inverse. It's just really up to how you write it. And then 20 minus x over 500. As we can see in up here, so I'll, I'll write it, we can see now that that was in fact the answer. So we'll go ahead and put um, square root of 20 minus x over 500, which we verified. Great. That wasn't so bad. The next step is now to write the domain of the inverse function in interval notation. So the domain of the inverse function is different. The only thing we know here is the domain of the original function was 0 to 0.2, which would imply the range of the inverse function is 0 to 0.2. But we would need to know the range of the original function to have it be the domain of my inverse. But instead of doing that, we could easily see with square roots, we know where we're going. In an application with arteries and hearts and things like that, we know that we're going to stay positive and, um, and at least zero, right? So we could see here the moment that, um, I'll write it over here, the moment here that this radicand is less than zero, we know that then at that point we're going to run into a problem. So if I go ahead and just take that radicand, uh, 20 minus x over 500, and make it less than zero, Right, I can see where that barrier would be. Now, what this would mean would be that we would need this not to be less than zero, but actually greater than or equal to zero. So if we can't have it right, less than zero, then what we want to do is find an answer for the domain, which would mean it would have to be at least zero. So once you solve, I think you can see it from here. You'll multiply each side by 500. You'll get 20 minus x greater than or equal to zero. And then you'll get 20 greater than or equal to x, right? So that would mean, um, again, we would always start at zero, right, at least zero. So it would be zero up into 20. So anytime there's a square root and you need to find a domain, you always set it greater than or equal to um, zero because you know you cannot have it be less than zero, especially with application. Okay, so if x and y switch with inverses, so do the units on its variables. So if we go back up here to the original problem and read for part c here, that interpret the inverse function, well, this means that v was originally the velocity of a blood in an artery, right? And x was the distance uh, from the ar center of the artery. If we switch these, that means now in the inverse function, this becomes the distance from the center of the artery. And this now becomes the velocity of blood in an artery.
So we would say the inverse function determines the distance from the center of the artery given the velocity, or the inverse function determines the velocity. And the inverse function would determine this part, which is the switch, right, which is the distance from the center. So in fact, we would use this first one. Why? Because in the original function, if x was distance from the artery and v was velocity, because x and y switch, we switch them as well, the unit. So that means y now becomes the distance, x now becomes the velocity. And that's just properties of inverse functions. Um, it's nice because as x and y switch, so do the units, so do the range and domain. So it's very, it's a nice clean relationship. The last part is finding the distance from the center of the artery with a velocity of 13 centimeters per second. So we could go ahead and do that by using the results from part A. So if F inverse of X is equal to the square root of 20 minus X over 500, this would mean that the velocity is 13. So let's go ahead and just plug and chug. So the F inverse of 13 is equal to the square root of 20 minus 13 over 500. And that would just give us the square root of 7 over 500. And we can just enter this into the calculator quickly, right? Second um, square root of 7 divided by 500. And we can round to the nearest two second decimal. So that would be here. It's 0.11, but the test digit is 8. So we take up that 1 by 1. So 0.12. All right, I hope this helps.